What's up guys? I'm Jay Dove and today I wanted to let you know that we're going to be making a node and telling you some things and I've got some good information here. I do have some flicker though. Something with my GoPro and the LED lights in my building. They did not get along great. I know about it. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm human. You, you, you can only do what you can do. Try to enjoy it. Maybe try to learn something from it. I'll see y'all guys on the next one. What's up guys? I'm Jay Dove and today it is cold it is actually 18 degrees outside it is frigid i don't know if you can see that i hope you can it is super cold and we're actually out here in the shed and if you don't know i've moved the repeater we're about it's at my dad's house it's up on the mountain a little bit higher so we're about two miles away from it if you know i did a live stream today so it's right now we are at let's see what time it is ah 1142 you see grumpy face there so it is 1142 at night and i'm out here making this video so i wanted to show y'all what i'm calling the 99 percent duty cycle node the reason i'm calling it that is because we did a four hour test with this thing the other day i keyed it up for four straight hours let it go and according you see that flicker i'm trying to get rid of that but according to this little temperature gauge right here 121 degrees is all we got now, let me tell you what we had. We had 60 degree outside temperatures. We were inside of a building. We did have the fan clicking on and off. It clicks on, I believe, at 85 and cuts off when it drops, or no, it kicks on at 95 and it drops back off when it hits below. When it hits 85, the fan will cut back off. So that's what it does. Um, so that's kind of what we had there. So let me show you this setup. Let me show you the build. It's super simple. Guys, you can do this. Um, like I said in one of my other videos, some of this stuff's expensive. Uh, me and my buddy are designing a interface board that will work with this radio and it'll make this radio COM port. The nice thing about COM port is you can key it up and the second this radio senses any signal coming into it, you're automatically putting it on the internet. You're already on Zello. It doesn't have to hear words. It doesn't have to hear anything. It's just going to put it on there. So right now, this is what we're running. This is a computer. Um, you can get these things off Amazon, eBay. They're not real expensive. This is your signal link box, which is technically the interface that I'm using now. Like I said in my other video, it's, a, it's an okay setup. It works pretty good. It does require Vox though. So you have it has to hear anything before it's gonna transmit. Um, I wish I could show you all that in a, a little bit better way. Maybe when we go inside, I'll show you, but my date and time actually makes a noise and that noise is what triggers that box to cut on. And then I have a one second delay. And then from there, it starts saying the words that it needs to say. If not, you're going to cut off. It always cuts off the first two words. Welcome. Welcome. This, this is, is the Covington 1 GMRS repeater. repeater. This repeater is connected to GMRS nationwide on Zello. So you need that little boop, and then that cl that triggers your, your Vox setting. That's what I don't like. So that's one thing I'm not crazy about, but it does work, and it works okay. And as long as you pick up your radio and you key it, and sometimes you can make a noise, or sometimes you can just hold it and the squelch breaking is enough for the Vox. So it works fairly well. But like I was saying, this is our box. This is our signal link, or this is our computer, and this is our signal link. This right here is our uh, temperature controller. Right now it's cold outside. It's not really doing a whole lot. And then of course you have the Redivis RT9000D. I have this on low power. My repeater is about two miles away from this. My repeater's at my dad's house. This is actually at my house. This is my little workshop that right now is full of stuff that I don't want to get snowed on tonight because it's calling for snow. But I wanted to show you all this because I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, how do you have your node hooked up? How does that work? How does it, you know, how did you do this? The best way I'm going to show you is we're going to do this. Hold on. this It's super cold. Let me cut the heat on. That bad boy high. All right, that's going to take a little while. By the time I leave out of here, it probably still won't warm this up. So the nice thing about this whole setup, as you can see, it's just, it's on a board clamped into my vice just sitting here. I do have a piece of, I think this was 10 gauge wire. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't really remember. I think this was 10 gauge feeding it. Do make sure you put a fuse on this. Um, I did run it to this fuse block. Kind of show you what we got. This first red wire here. 
let me see so right here so this first red wire i've got is nothing more than the computer wire the bigger wire here is our radio wire and then the small little black wire here is our fan and this is our grounded bus bar and our ground wire coming in as our power wire and our other power wire so our positive and our negative power wires as you can see i've still got three more i can use three more bus bars you know all that um, make sure you fuse everything i've got a two amp fuse a three amp fuse and a 10 amp fuse i like to go lighter on my fuses just i mean if it's going to pop a fuse it pops a fuse i'd rather pop a fuse than burn a wire guys do your research find out which gauge wire you're running find out how many amps that wire can take and just make sure you go below that if that wire says hey it can handle 10 amps at 10 foot then put you a five amp fuse in it give yourself some leeway let the fuse blow before your wire goes just keep your house from burning down like i said this is a heavier wire coming in it's either 10 or 12. this my little setup here that's our cb you know in case we want to talk on cb but everything's going through this power inverter right now guys if you don't know this whole this whole shed is on solar panel you might be able to see it right there there's my little solar controller the whole shed i've got lights lights i've got outlets um i'm probably doing this the most inefficient way by powering an inverter taking 120 volt and powering it back down to 12 volt but hey it is what it is that's just how i have it set up because i have an outlet down here that just works so we didn't get much sun today so we are a little bit you know we're, we're dropping off hopefully the repeater will be able to make it through the night when the sun can pick it back up tomorrow this whole setup is just run on two uh deep cycle batteries that i run on my boat off it was cheaper to put solar out here than it was to run electric out to this building just because of how far away it is from my house so this is our little setup this is it for everything the nice thing about this was i wanted a 12 volt system and this is what we have like i said this box will end up getting replaced with my buddy's board here i think tuesday that it should show up tomorrow's lark or yeah tomorrow's martin luther king day so tuesday we'll be replacing that if you want to see it go ahead drop a Tell me, I'll, uh, I'll do a video showing how to hook that up and showing how we hook it up and how it's set up. And you'll be able to get on my repeater and listen to it. You'll be able to talk to me and see how the board sounds. Um, my wire management, you know, we just kind of tied everything up the best we could. Tried to keep it as neat as possible. This is what it looks like. This is what we're talking to my repeater. You know, this is a 45 watt radio. I've got it on low power. If you put it on high power, will it run, you know, 99% due cycle? I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm not really sure. I do know the cooling fan really helps. Uh, this one's actually a really quiet fan. I'm going to be putting two of these on my repeater inside. I just wanted to show you all a quick little setup of how this is done. Literally, uh, this, if you want to use the signal link, like I said, it does work and it works fairly well. You can take this, it's a plug and play. You plug it into this little computer, USB. There's no power for it. It gets its power from the USB. The computer automatically detects it. And you're off to the races. It, uh, it works really well. Um, get your pinouts for this cord here. So your RJ45, this is just an old mic cable, but that RJ45 plugs in back here to the interface. So really the only thing you need to find out and use a quick Google search is the pin out for this board. And then you need to adjust the pins on this. Get on YouTube and look up how to adjust your pins on a signal link. There's tons of videos up, it's real easy. It's just you push a wire in one side, you go to the number on the other side and you push the wire back down. Real simple guys, anybody can do it. As long as you own an Allen key set. And honestly, I, I believe it came with the Allen head or the Allen set to unscrew the box. But I get a lot of questions about what's controlling my repeater. This does my date, time, my Zello, everything right here. I don't seem to have any issues. It runs all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week with zero issues. All right guys, so something I forgot to mention. Let's say you have this set up but you don't have a repeater for this to talk to. But you really like RF and you really want to know, or you really want to talk with your handheld to people, you know, in your area. Or you just want to be able to, I don't know, put this antenna up a tree and 
have it, you know, 40 foot up in the air, 50 foot up in the air. And when you're driving around town, you just want to grab your mobile radio and be able to talk to people on Zello because that's what you enjoy doing. You can do that with this setup. You don't need a repeater. Now, a little caveat to that. So I did have a guy the other day tell me that he was having an issue with people talking on his node with just a little family service radio. So the FRS radios not GMRS. He was getting kids and stuff like that and they were transmitting across Zello. It was a big issue. You could have that happen with this. The nice thing about a repeater is, you know, you have your input and output uh, tones there. So you, people with the wrong type of radio aren't going to be able to get on the repeater. If they're out there talking, let's say you take this radio and you put it on GMRS channel three and you're sitting there and you're using channel three. Channel three is your channel. I don't remember if that's a high output channel or not. I think it is. I think it's a full output channel. I could be wrong. I don't remember off the top of my head. But let's say you're using the three and some kid for Christmas gets a radio and he likes channel three. It's still gonna pick this up, which means that box is gonna transmit it on Zello. So keep that in mind. Try to, I guess, I don't really know how you could avoid that. Hopefully, <laughs> I, I don't know. You're just gonna have that issue. If you run into that issue, maybe switch frequency. All right guys, quick, while I'm editing this, I, I know a simple way to fix this. Put a tone on that radio, CTCSS tone on there. And that means that they'll be able to hear you. They'll, they'll hear, you know, all your Zello stuff and everything. But when they key up their FRS radios, it won't actually key up your radio. So they'll be able to hear you. So it's not private in any way, shape or form, but your radio won't pick them up. So that would be a simple fix to this whole, you know, FRS radio uh, conundrum. But anyway, you could put this on channel nine. You can put on channel eight, you know, seven, uh, 15, 16, 22, and grab your handheld and talk straight to this radio and it'll go on to Zello. You don't need a repeater. So don't think you have to have the repeater. So that is something I just wanted to let y'all know. And I wanted to make sure that you guys were completely aware of it, that if somebody was on the FRS radio, they could technically t talk to this system and talk on GMRS live or you know Zello or wherever you've got your node connected to via the internet. So just wanted you to know that um you can't really do a repeater frequency because of the input output you're not gonna be able to do that with just this radio guys if you like the video go ahead hit that like button for me subscribe to my channel if you're new and like always take someone outdoors yeah!